Hello and welcome to Math Simplified. In this video, we are going to talk about the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Our immune system consists mainly of two types of immunity. The cellular immunity which consists of the different types of cells and the humoral immunity which consists of the antibodies and the cells producing them. Whenever a harmful organism enters our body, our immune system is able to sense it and destroys it by different mechanism. This is known as the sensitivity of our immune system. Although it normally defends us against infections, our immune system can get excessively sensitive against non-harmful things like dust, pollen, medicines and many food substances. This excessive activity of our immune system leads to local and systemic symptoms that can range from harmless itching to severe conditions like hypotensive shock and laryngospasm. This excessive activity of our immune system to seemingly non-harmful antigens is known as hypersensitivity. Now hypersensitivity reactions are of four types, type 1 to type 4 which differ from each other as different components of immune system are involved in each four. In this video, we will only talk about the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Allergies are a classic example of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction, which can be allergies to foods like peanuts, eggs, fish or allergies to dust and pollen. Bronchial asthma is also an example of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Now let's look at the pathological mechanism involved in type 1 reaction. And to understand this, we are going to take the example of how a person develops dust or pollen allergy. The first phase of type 1 reaction involves sensitization. This sensitization is to the antigen, which refers to dust or pollen in this case. This is the phase when the person has not yet developed hypersensitivity to the allergen. When the person is exposed to the dust or pollen, it enters the body through two main routes, the respiratory membrane of lungs and the skin. At both these places, we have specialized cells known as the antigen presenting cells. In the lungs, we have the pulmonary antigen presenting cells and in the skin, we have the Langerhan cells. These cells capture the minute antigens that are present on the dust or pollen and they take these antigens to the T cells. To be exact, the naive CD4 T cells. The naive CD4 T cells when exposed to these antigens become mature and are now known as mature CD4 T cells. These T cells produce a lot of chemicals like interleukin 4, interleukin 5, interleukin 13 and many more. But in the sensitization phase, the most important cytokine is the interleukin-4, which acts on B lymphocytes. Now, as most of you may already know, the antibodies are produced by B cells. And the type of antibodies that a B cell produces is known as the class of antibodies, whether it be IgA, IgG or IgM. This interleukin-4 acts on B cells and leads to a phenomenon known as class switching which essentially means that the interleukin-4 makes the B cells to switch the class of antibodies that they are producing to immunoglobulin E. So the B cells which are now exposed to interleukin-4 only produce IgE. Now why is this important? Because the main type of antibody that is involved in type 1 reaction is the IgE only. Let's look at how. This IgE antibody that is produced can identify the allergen that led to the initial sensitization. This antibody gets attached to mast cells and basophils, which are the two most important cells involved in type 1 reaction. The mast cells and basophils have a special type of receptor on their surface. This is known as the FC epsilon R1 receptor. Now if you have a little bit of background knowledge about the structure of antibodies, you know that the antibodies have a FC part with which they bind to the cells and the FAB part with which they bind the antigens. The FC epsilon R1 receptor on mast cells and basophils, they have a very high affinity for the FC portion of IgE antibodies that are produced as a result of class switching of B cells. These antibodies go and attach to these receptors on mast cells and basophils. 
With this, the phase of sensitization is complete and we get these mast cells and basophils which have been armed with these antibodies, the IgE antibodies. These are waiting for the same allergen to enter the body and start the phase of reaction, which is the second phase of type 1 reaction. The reaction phase begins when the same allergen enters the body again. The IgE antibodies recognize these allergens and since these antibodies are attached to mast cells and basophils, these signal the cells to release lots of chemicals that are present inside them. These chemicals are known as the mediators of inflammation and are responsible for symptoms of immediate hypersensitivity like itching, hypotension, bronchospasm and shock. The reaction phase is further subdivided into two main phases. The immediate reaction phase that develops in minutes after the repeated exposure to allergen and a late reaction phase that develops minutes to hours after the exposure to the allergen. And the basic difference between the immediate reaction and the late reaction is that in the immediate reaction phase the chemicals that are already formed and stored inside the mast cells are released whereas in the late phase new chemicals are synthesized which maintain the hypersensitivity reaction for hours. The immediate reaction starts in minutes after the exposure to the allergen. As soon as the allergen re-enters the body, it is recognized by IgE antibodies that are bound to mast cells and basophils, which sends a signal to the mast cells to release the preformed mediators which include chemicals like histamine, serotonin, heparin, proteases like tryptase and chymase, ATP and lysosomal enzymes. However, the most important of them is histamine. Histamine acts on blood vessels and leads to their dilation, which leads to delivery of more inflammatory cells and chemicals to the site of allergy. Histamine also causes increased permeability of blood vessels, which leads to increased transudation of cells from blood vessels into the tissue spaces. This leads to local edema. Erythema, which means redness of the allergy site and raised local temperature of the allergy site. Histamine also depolarizes nerve endings which leads to itching and pain. Now a classical example of this is a mosquito bite. The bump and redness which develop in seconds are nothing but the immediate phase of type 1 reaction. The late reaction phase develops hours after the initial exposure to the allergen and involves synthesis of new chemical mediators in the mast cells. The membranes of the mast cells have phospholipids. In type 1 reaction, an enzyme known as phospholipase is activated. This enzyme converts phospholipids in the membrane to arachidonic acid. This is the parent compound from which numerous prostaglandins and leukotrienes are synthesized. Now this topic deserves a video on its own, but in short these newly synthesized chemicals lead to infiltration of more inflammatory cells at the site of allergy. They lead to tissue damage, smooth muscle spasm and edema that can last for days. Like the leukotriene C4, D4 and E4 and the prostaglandin D2. All these lead to vasodilation and increased vascular permeability, which leads to continuous influx of inflammatory cells at the site of allergy. They also cause smooth muscle spasm. Leukotriene B4 leads to infiltration of more cells like neutrophils, eosinophils because it is a chemoattractant. That means it is a chemical which attracts other cells at the site which it is produced. Interleukin-5 is another important cytokine that is produced by mast cells and it is the most potent activator of eosinophils. These recruited cells amplify and sustain the inflammatory response without additional exposure to allergen. The late phase reaction is the major cause of symptoms in conditions like asthma. So to summarize, the type 1 reaction is a disorder of immune system that can lead to many important medical conditions like asthma, angioedema, anaphylaxis, food allergies, etc. 
It involves two important phases, a phase of sensitization in which the allergen enters the body for the first time and our immune system forms a memory of this allergen. The phase of reaction begins when the allergen enters the body again. It is quickly recognized by the IgE antibodies bound to mast cells which signals these cells to release huge amounts of chemicals like histamine, serotonin, prostaglandins which leads to symptoms like itching, pain, redness, swelling and smooth muscle spasms. So this was all about the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Thank you so much for watching guys. In the next video, we are going to talk about the type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. You can get all the flashcards from this video and all our other previous videos by joining the Med Simplifieds community on patreon.com. Plus you will also unlock many other cool features like written content from videos, behind the scenes, exclusive posts and much more. Visit patreon.com slash medsimplified for more.